Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're looking at this. It's the Harley Benton TE62CC in this rather lovely Lake Placid blue finish. Now this guitar is part of Harley Benton's deluxe series of instruments, and that means that it's currently the highest spec standard Telecaster style of instrument that the brand offers. That doesn't mean that it's expensive in the grand scheme of things though. This guitar was released in December of 2021 at a price of 149 euros, and I stumped up my own money for it because I just had to have it when I saw it was released. I love Telecasters, I love blue guitars, this was Lake Placid Blue, and I just went for it. It comes in three other colours though, you've got Shell Pink, you've got Seafoam Green, and you've got Charcoal Frost. So many, many options available for Telecaster fans with this one. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is take you through the specifications and features of the guitar, then we'll play it in a bunch of different varieties of styles so we can hear how it sounds, and afterwards I'll tell you my experiences of having it and owning it and playing it, how it feels to play, and whether I think it's worth the money at the end of the day. So the TE62 then basically gives you what you would expect from a more classic leaning Telecaster. The TE62's body is poplar, which is actually a very popular body wood for Telecaster style guitars, and it's finished in this case in this beautiful Lake Placid blue there, really lovely colour. There's no binding on the side of the body, which you probably wouldn't expect for this kind of money either. And we've got this beautiful mint black mint three ply scratch plate too, which really adds to the vintage vibe of the guitar in my opinion. Looks really classy, looks really elegant. The rest of the guitar is pretty much standard Telecaster fare though. We've got these two Roswell Telecaster style pickups here, we've got a three-way switch for them, a master volume control, and a master tone control. Here we've got a chrome three saddle traditional Telecaster style bridge. And apart from the Roswell pickups, the rest of the hardware on this instrument is Harley Benton no-name stuff, so it's going to be interesting to see how it performs. Moving up to the neck then, and we have a roasted maple neck with maple fingerboard. Now on the Harley Benton website it refers to the neck as being vintage style caramelized maple, which sounds delicious, and I hope it's going to play like that too. It certainly looks expensive. It looks a lot more valuable than the 149 euro asking price, that's for sure. Now the profile of the neck is a kind of slimish to medium D shape, I would say. Very suitable for beginners and more experienced players alike. It's a satin finish too. It feels really, really good. And if I just flip you to the back of the neck there, you can see that we have a skunk stripe too, which also adds to that vintage Telecaster vibe. 21 frets on this neck then, it's a 648 millimeter scale length. Harley Benton don't tell us how big the frets themselves are, but to me they feel like they're pretty standard, either medium or medium jumbo. Up to the nut here we have a 42 millimeter standard plastic nut, and the Telecaster type headstock has the Harley Benton logo and six Harley Benton tuners on the back there. So it's a simple rock and roll machine of a guitar. Telecasters are a great starter instrument because they're so simple, not many different switches and buttons and knobs to hide behind. You just play and rock out. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to play a bunch of different riffs in different styles and see how these Roswell pickups handle my playing. My rig for today is going to be my Hughes & Kettner Black Spirit 200 amp head, and we'll start on the amps clean channel. We'll play some folk and some indie and some poppy stuff. Then we'll go to the amps crunch channel where we'll play some classic rock and maybe some indie too. After that we'll go to the Amps lead channel and do some harder rock and some punk and some punk rock. And at the end we'll go back to the Amps clean channel and I'll turn on my Rev G3 distortion pedal. We'll tune the TE62 down to drop D and we'll see if it can do some metal and maybe even chug. Enough talk then, this is the Harley Benton TE62CC in Lake Placid Blue. Let's play it now and we'll speak in more detail about it afterwards.
Okay then, so that was the Harley Benton TE62cc in Lake Placid Blue, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. Now for me, the one slight worry I had after I'd ordered the guitar and was waiting for it to arrive was, for 149 euros, am I going to get a guitar that even resembles a Telecaster? Is it going to feel like one? Is it going to sound like one and play like one? Well, all those fears disappeared in an instant when I was able to plug the guitar in after I got it out of the box, because this just has that Telecaster vibe going on in spades. So we'll get onto that in a little bit, but let me tell you more in detail now about my experiences with the instrument. And when I got it out of the box, the first thing I noticed was that this Lake Placid Blue finish is absolutely beautiful. It's a really, really lovely colour of guitar. It doesn't look as deep and rich or as sparkly as that of my Squire Classic Vibe Telly, and I'll try and get a picture of the two together that I can blend in now just to show you the subtle differences. But for €149, Euros, this guitar looks great. The Lake Placid Blue body with the mint scratch plate and the roasted maple neck, or should I say vintage style caramelised maple maple neck really, really makes for good looking. It's a great looking guitar and I was really happy to see it. And I was also happy that I'd chosen Lake Placid Blue over the Shell Pink, although I might, you know, get a Shell Pink one too at some point in the future. Who knows? That's for another video and another time. When I picked up the guitar, I was also pleasantly surprised at the weight. This specific example weighs 3.4 kilograms. That's seven pounds seven and a bit. So it's quite weighty. It's not super light. It's not super heavy. It just feels good. It feels like a real guitar. It's not super overweight. It doesn't feel like a cheap, inexpensive toy either. It feels like an authentic Telecaster should feel to me, and it feels great to play sitting down or to play standing up with a strap. So all good there as well. And the other thing that I noticed straight out of the box was that the maple neck didn't look exactly how I'd pictured it from the Harley Benton website. I'd imagine that we'd have had a bit more vintage finish on the fingerboard itself. We don't have that, we just have the caramelized maple, but it is great in its own way. It's just not exactly what I was expecting. So now what I think we should do is move on and talk a little bit about the build quality of this guitar. So what can you expect in terms of build quality from a guitar that costs 149 euros? Well, I think the first thing you can hope for is that nothing is gonna be too wrong with the guitar when you get it out of the box. And I'm really happy to confirm that I can't really find anything wrong with this guitar whatsoever. The first things you look for are the neck and the body. And when it comes to the body, I've just mentioned, I love the Lake Placid Blue finish, and it seems to have been applied very well. There's no block is in the paint, there's no overspill anywhere else on the guitar. It's just been done very well throughout. The rest of the guitar's body has also been done really well. The scratch plate fits in the right places. It looks great too. When it comes to the pickups, the sounds were all fine. They were working. There's no scratchiness or cutting out with the pots or the selector switch. So all of that seems good too, in terms of quality. And going up to the neck as well, everything seems to have been done right. The neck felt great straight out of the box. The frets are not sharp at all. They seem to have been crowned well enough. The intonation is decent, the action is good, it's low to medium, it could go down a bit but the guitar is perfectly fine to play as it is, and the Harley Benton no-name tuners are quite firm and do their job well. After I'd tuned the guitar for the first time and stretched the strings in, I basically didn't need to retune it at all during the playing part of this video. So full marks there to Harley Benton for the build quality for €149, Euros. and I think that that also lends to the guitar having a great level of playability straight out of the box. Of course, like every other new guitar, this guitar could benefit from a setup to make it 5 or 10% better in terms of the playing experience. But straight out of the box, it was all good. You know, the neck just feels great. That satin finish on the back of the vintage style caramelized maple neck is really, really nice. And this guitar was a joy to play. So I really, really enjoyed playing it. Now, I'm a big Telecaster fan. I love the slab bodies. I don't need a tummy cut or anything like that. This is just how guitar feels at home for me. And if you enjoy that kind of thing, I think you'll be right at home with this one too. And the other 
crucial thing that we have to speak about, of course, is the sounds. Does this guitar sound any good? We've already established that for 149 euros, it feels and looks good, smells good too, but how does it sound? If it doesn't sound anything like a Telecaster, if it doesn't sound anything like a good guitar, what's the point? Well, as soon as I plugged it in, I was straight in Tele Twang City. Now, these Roswell pickups are quite vintage voice, they're quite low output, and as soon as I went to the bridge pickup setting, I got that Tele Twang that I know and love so much. It just sounds dead on. It sounds like exactly what I would be going for. Now, if you know Telecasters, you'll know that the bridge pickup can be quite ice picky and brittle in some contexts, and you do get that with this guitar. You know, these Telecaster type pickups can get a little bit thin sounding, but if you want the Telecaster vibe, you're absolutely going to be in the right place with these pickups and with this guitar. When you listen to the clean sound examples that I did, you can hear that it's also a versatile instrument too. It does do those little country things and it does do the twangy stuff, but it also is great for indie stuff, it's great for pop, it's great for folk, and if you go to the neck pickup or the middle pickup and turn the tone control down a bit, you can get it into really mellow, almost jazzy scenarios. The Telecaster is a supremely versatile guitar, and we proved that already with the clean sounds. Now, the pickups also came to life when I went to the crunch channel of the amp and did the classic rock stuff. I really love the bite of a Telecaster bridge. I love it for indie rock as well. I love it for classic rock. It just, it has a sort of aggression to it. It jumps out in any mix as well. It's great for live work. It's a really, really fantastic sound. And these Roswell pickups have that sound. So I really enjoyed that too. Once we started getting up to the heavier stuff, you started to sense that this wasn't really the natural place for these pickups to be. That when we did the hard rock and when we even did the metal too, they kept up with it. They can chug to a certain extent. I mean, you would never really want to use this guitar for a full on metal gig, partly because the pickups are also quite noisy too, because they're single coils. But when I had the rev on, when I was chugging this guitar in drop D, it sounded all right, you know? The clarity was there, there wasn't that much low end, but it was really, really clear. It sounded good. And I think if you wanted a guitar to do everything, a Telecaster or a Les Paul is gonna pretty much do everything you would want. But a Telecaster for me is pretty much always where my heart is, and I really love the sounds of this one. So I was really, really pleased that in pretty much any musical context, I was 100% happy with how this one sounded. So if you're looking for an affordable type of Telecaster guitar, is the TE62 the best value for money one out there? Well, for 149 euros, it's pretty hard to beat. Now, Harley Benton, of course, does do the TE20, which is a much more affordable version. That's about 90 euros. And that doesn't have Roswell pickups. It has generic pickups and everything about it is cheaper. And I've played the TE20 as well. And it's a great guitar for the money too, but I feel like if you've got the money to go up for this one, for the TE62, I really think you should because everything about it is just next level for me, as the price would suggest, in fact. When it comes to other brands, of course, Fender and Squire are the most famous in terms of Telecasters. They are the Telecaster originators. After all, you're not going to get anything Fender-y for under 200 bucks, but for 150, the same price as the TE62, you could get a new Squire Bullet Telecaster. Now, those are great guitars as well, but I have to say, I've played a few of them in stores also fairly recently, and the TE62, for me, is a little bit higher in terms of quality, playability, and in terms of sounds than the Squire Bullet Strats. For a little bit more money though, you can get yourself a Squire Affinity guitar. Now I had a Squire Affinity Telecaster for years on end and it was one of my most played and most enjoyed instruments that entire time. Sadly I sold it at some point, I don't actually know why, but it was a great guitar it was also super versatile and it had generic Squire pickups in it, but it sounded fantastic. And it had that same thinness issue as the TE62 in some genres for playing metal and stuff, but it's a great guitar as well. So if you're kind of between 150 euros and 200 maybe, or if you wanted to consider a used Squire Affinity, that's maybe gonna give the TE62 some competition. But the other thing where the TE62 wins, of course, is the fact that you've got some cool modern finishes. I don't think there's any Squire Affinity guitars in shell pink at the moment. Now, if you have a a little bit more money to spend with Squire and you want that Squire name on the Squire official headstock design, then of course you can go Classic Vibe. Now they started about 350 euros up to about 400-ish and they're definitely a step up in quality to this one overall and you get all the, the brand name nostalgia too, so that's cool. But in terms of quality, the TE62 is not far behind. So in terms of value for money, this one is almost the best that I've played, and it could very well be the best that I've played. Of course, there are many other companies who also do their take on the Telecaster style of guitar. Some of the most obvious ones that I can think of off the top of my head would be vintage guitars, who have the vintage V52 and V62, and those are great instruments, but a bit more expensive than the TE62. There are also other brands like Slick Guitars, for example, or AXL or Axel, however you pronounce it, and a bunch of other kind of cheaper, 
Far Eastern companies make their own versions of the Telecasters. But I have to say, from all of the ones that I've played, especially around this price point, you can't really go far wrong with the TE62. At the end of the day then, just how good is the TE62? Well, in my opinion, for 149 euros, this guitar is absolutely outstanding value for money. I think if you're a beginner, if you're looking for your first guitar, then this is an absolutely perfect choice. It feels great, it looks fantastic, it plays really well, and it sounds authentic, it sounds great, it sounds like a genuine Telecaster. And what more can you want from a beginner's or from a first electric guitar? How I wish all those years ago that I'd had one as good as this for my first instrument. My guitar story would have been a very different one, I'm sure, but that's another story for another day. Anyway, if you're a beginner, if you're looking for your first instrument, I genuinely don't think there's much better out there in terms of value for money. And this guitar, of course, you wouldn't outgrow it that quickly at all. It would still be with you in three, four, five years time. It will grow and progress with you as you continue to play it. And of course, being a Harley Benton, you can upgrade it anytime you want as well. So if you wanted to put more expensive hardware in there, if you wanted to change the pickups, or if you wanted to upgrade the tuners, you could do that no problem. That said, you probably wouldn't need to do that either because everything on this guitar performed very well and very stably for me indeed. Now, if you've already been playing guitar for a while and you're looking to get your first telly, you can't go wrong with the T62 either. Again, it's outstanding value for money and it does everything a good Telecaster should for such a great price. So full marks for me there as well. If you want a Telecaster guitar for this kind of money, have a look at the Squire Sure, have a look at this one as well. Get the one that works best for you. But for me, I would have no hesitation in recommending this guitar to anyone who's got around 150 euros or up to 200 to spend and is looking for a Telecaster instrument like this. Take into account as well the super cool modern day finishes like shell pink and you've got what I think could be a real top seller for Harley Benton. I really, really enjoy this guitar and I'm looking forward to seeing how it treats me over the coming months and years. That's it for this video then. I hope I've answered all of your questions about the TE62. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the riffs and hearing how it sounds. But if there's anything else you want to know, please just write me a comment down there and I will look forward to discussing everything and answering everything to the best of my ability as well. So don't hesitate to do that if you want to know anything more about this guitar. Stick around with the Rich Words music channel and please drop me a like and a subscribe if you're still here because that really helps the channel and helps more people to see the videos and it helps me grow this little community that we're starting to build here. But that's been it for today's video then. I've been Rich for Rich Words music and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.